Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Ala's World of Finance and welcome to Stock Market Daily. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We've got a few things to talk about today. We're going to talk about AMD, Ford, Tesla, um, but let's go ahead and just start by looking at the market. So the Dow Jones is up 0.61%. The NASDAQ, tech heavy NASDAQ, is down another 0.5%. We've seen a lot of uh, volatility with them and kind of struggling uh, recently. And the S&P 500 is up 0.23%. By the way, the market closed early today. Tomorrow's July 4th. It's going to be closed. And then the next day, I believe it just returns to regular hours after that. Okay, um, some of the popular stocks here, Ford, we're going to talk about them, but they're up quite a bit. Macy's is up almost 3%. I would never invest in Macy's, to be honest, because of everything that's going on with Amazon. But, uh, but they're up, so that's good for them. Tesla is down. We're going to talk about Tesla. Netflix is down uh, over 2%. Citigroup up 1%. We're looking at the gainers and losers. Uh, let's see here. Gap. Gap is actually up over 4%. I didn't even know Gap was still around, <laughs> to be honest, but apparently they are. They're up over 4%, so good for them. And Western Digital is down almost 4%. I recently talked about Western Digital in one of my previous videos, so I'm a little surprised that they're going down. I feel like there was some good news going on there, but I'll have to research them a little bit more and see what's going on. NVIDIA down 3.62%. And uh, AMD is down another 2.64%. I keep getting, well, not a lot, but I, I get every once in a while, I get like a negative comment on AMD and the tech sector in general. Actually, recently, I just got a comment saying that the, what did they say? They said something like, like the whole tech sector is going down. And they said like, I think the direct quote was they said that I'm going to, I'm going to lose all of my money. Like they were like talking to me. They said, I'm going to lose all of my money. But that's a, that's like such a broad like statement to make. Like, I'm probably like, okay, I'm probably taking them too seriously, but, but to say that I'm going to lose all my money first, like I'm a long-term investor. So for me to lose all of my money, the company has to go bankrupt. Like all of my stocks would have to go bankrupt for me to lose all my money. Like I don't, I don't sell my stocks when everybody's panicking and, and then people will say like, oh, well, you're just, you're, you're catching the falling knife. Like I hate, I hate that. I hate that statement. Like that's one of the biggest like uh, quotes or statements that I hate the most because it's not the thing is people don't understand it's not always a falling knife sometimes it's like a falling toothpick and and I could easily catch that and it's like and then stocks could go right back up like people people don't really understand when when stocks go down for me I usually just pick up more because I just see it as a sale but I'm a long-term investor I don't I'm I think this guy maybe he was thinking that I'm like a day trader but then again it's like if he was watching my videos why would he think that I'm a day trader because I'm, I'm obviously not but I'm a long-term investor tech stocks could absolutely go down more sure of course they can I'm not arguing that they're not overvalued like ton, tons most of them probably are overvalued but that doesn't mean that there's certain stocks that I think will still continue to do very well I mean I'm, I'm not just gonna run away from it just because everybody else tells me that I should panic you know I, I'm still holding my position that AMD is going to be at around $20 per share at the end of the year going into next year I still really believe in them so you know that's my opinion but for, I don't know for him to just say like oh you're gonna lose all your money it's like it's such a I don't want to say ignorant that sounds a little mean but it's kind of like a it's just a very broad statement like I, I just I really just don't agree with that because I'm, I'm not that type of investor but anyway um sorry I, I went off on a whole rant <laughs> but um okay so let's talk about AMD for a second because there were some reports coming out that AMD was stealing 10% of the CPU market. And a lot of these reporters, they kind of just took this data from past market and they kind of just ran with it and started posting up headlines like AMD steals 10% from Intel and all kinds of like uh, random things. Now, what's really going on, some some other reports, some other, other reporters actually came out and kind of clarified things and, and that made it a little bit better. But what's really going on is that Passmark was really looking at the enthusiast PC market. So the people taking these surveys, they're, you know, they're people that build their own PCs that use high end chips and things like that. And you got to remember, AMD has never ha hasn't been a part of that market for a while. They haven't really released, you know, competitive, you know, high end chips to go against Intel. And Intel was kind of just pricing their stuff like however they felt like it. And they were overpricing, to be honest. In fact, a lot of people are saying that they're really happy that AMD is coming out, you know, swinging now with not, not only just not just competitive pricing, but they're also coming out with competitive performance. And that's they're happy about that because that's, they feel that that's going to force Intel to start bringing down some of their prices because, you know, they didn't really have anybody to compete with. So they were kind of just overpricing a lot of their stuff. But now AMD is coming out with their competitive stuff. And so obviously PC enthusiasts are going to want to go out and buy those, you know, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and they're going to want to test those 
test their performance, benchmark them, things like that. And so that's obviously going to lead to more sales and things like that. So yeah, of course there was still, you know, a 10% increase, but it's, it's in that type of market. It's not in general, overall, the whole CPU market. And you have to take into account it's people who are actually doing these surveys. So there's just a lot of variables there. So you can't just make a broad statement like, oh, AMD just stole 10% from Intel. And I'm bullish on AMD. I'm not like, I'm not trying to sound bad on AMD. Like I love AMD, but it's just, it's not very accurate. Some, a lot of other reports were saying that it's more of like a one to 2% like overall market gain for them, which is still great news. And what I really see, when I look at this type of stuff, what I'm really thinking is that they're really making progress on you know, Intel's MPU segment, and they're really going to start picking up more gains in the, you know, low volume, but high margin uh, segment. Okay, so so it's still really good for them. So, and, and as they release all of their parts and all their chips and all these different things, and they get their full line of products out there, that's where I really see AMD starting to really steal a lot of market share. And they don't have to dominate, they don't have to be the winner, but they, as long as they can steal some, that should bring up their share price. So that's that's why I'm bullish on AMD. So anyway, that was uh, AMD stuff. I guess maybe just one other thing I want to mention is that some people were saying like, oh, like AMD stuff is like already getting outdated, like some, some like ridiculous comments. But um, AMD has said many times that they're going to be improving on their chips and all the different things that they're releasing. So there's really no reason to doubt that, um, you know, it's not like Apple releases like an iPhone and then all of a sudden they just stop making iPhones and then they like, they go bankrupt or something. You know, it's, you, you always improve on your products. So anyway, okay, I know I talk about AMD way too much. I I, I fully understand, I, I apologize everybody. I'm gonna try to stop talking about AMD so much because I talk about them too much. But anyway, let's move on to the next part of the news. So Ford is in the news today. They announced June US auto sales. And they beat some expectations. So Ford sold almost 228,000 vehicles. Now this number is actually 5.1% lower, excuse me, than what was reported in June of last year. But there was a general expectation that sales would be over 9% lower. So it actually still beat expectations. Uh, now a couple more numbers to throw at you guys. Truck and SUV sales were leading the pack. The F-Series trucks were up almost 10% year over year. The Explorer line was up 22.7% with the with its best sales performance that we've seen in the last several years. And average tra transaction pricing was up $1,800 while the industry only saw a gain of $520. So that was uh, also a, a good thing in comparison. Now on the negative side, fleet sales were down almost 14%, but Ford said that it's because uh, because of expected timing issues, and when all is said and done for 2017, they should see comparable numbers to 2016. So it should be about the same. So not a huge deal overall. Now, what happened to the stock? Well, let's go ahead and take a quick look. So their stock actually went up today, and it went up 3.31 percent. And then in extended hours trading went down 0.17%, but overall up over 3%. So very good for Ford today. Tesla is also in the news today, mostly because Elon Musk went Twitter happy um, la uh, last night. So he was he basically revealed that the Model 3 is starting production. And we found out that regular uh, regulatory requirements passed two weeks ahead of schedule. Now, similar to the company's earlier projections, we now know that the first unit will come off the line on Friday. The first 30 customer units will be delivered on July 28th. In September, he says that we should see above 1,500 units made and that should increase to 20,000 in December. So this is all great news considering that Tesla's had issues in the past uh, with production and stuff like that, but it looks like everything's kind of smoothed out, everything's kind of going well. So it was great news. So their stock rallied up almost three percent today but it just kind of came crashing down for some reason and when looking at their stock it's actually down for the day 2.49 percent and then uh with a chain and then in an extended hours trading down another 0.37 percent so i don't know if you guys consider tesla like a like a tech stock but there's just so much volatility right now with the nasdaq and so that's kind of i don't know who knows why why it went down but anyway my nintendo stock kind of took a dip today too but i don't i don't have any pro like i said I, I mentioned this earlier in the video i don't have any problem with dips i like little corrections i, I think stocks tend to get a little overhyped i like it when they kind of correct a little bit kind of take a little dip i pick some more up on the sale and then usually they kind of just keep trending kind of upward that's usually how i look at it but it, there's exceptions to that like obviously i would i would still sell stock if i had to like it and i've taken losses before but but it just depends. Every situation is different. So you, you just you can't make broad statements and say that like 
everything is going to go down or, or that you're going to lose all of your money. There's there's different situations where if, if you really know the stock that you're investing in, then you kind of know when you should sell and you kind of know if something's happening. Like, oh, no, like stock is going to really start to go down like you get out. But there's just I don't know. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going with that. So <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope that all of you enjoyed the video. If you're new, please subscribe. If you like the video, please hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. And if you watch the video all the way through to this very moment in time, then you are. Today, you're... Who are you? Okay, you know what? You guys are Tesla. But hear me out. You're Tesla when, when they started rallying up like almost 3%. And then right before they crashed, you guys pulled like a Transformers on me and you guys you guys morphed into Ford and then you went up like another 3%. So you guys, I don't know how you guys did that, but you guys, you guys are on fire. Got to watch you guys. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you all have a wonderful, beautiful day. Take care.